Several New Orleans Saints newcomers impress at rookie minicamps thanks to precision and energy. We got all of that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdet Nation and Houdet family? I'm your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's quick hit episode, we're going to get you updated with everything that you need to know from New Orleans Saints rookie minicamp day two, which was the first day that was open to media. We're going to take a look at one tryout player that actually stood out quite a bit. We'll dive into Bub means bring in the positive energy and why that's going to have a big impact for this team in 2024. And we're going to kick everything off with Spencer Rattler, Clint Kubiak, as well as Coach Dub, Keith Williams, the New Orleans Saints new wide receivers coach, all big time standout newcomers for this New Orleans Saints team. Let's break down our biggest takeaways and observations from Rookie Minicamp. We appreciate you very much as always for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day and for being an everyday or here on the show, which is a proud part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get into it. And we're going to start off with the guy that I know every Saints fan wants to hear more about right now, rookie quarterback Spencer Rattler, who was very impressive in this rookie minicamp setting. Now, Let's keep in mind that, of course, this is rookie minicamp. The defenses are not complex. The talent is not starter level all over that defense either, right? This is These are early days. This is just an early look at Spencer Rattler. But the things that he could control, I thought he controlled well. It seemed that his work with Clint Kubiak, New Orleans Saints new offensive coordinator, as well as their new quarterbacks coach, Andrew Janoko focused a lot around uh, getting in and out of huddles, play calling, right? Getting the cadence right. He has a very strong cadence. Uh, Working on footwork, which I think is something you're going to see him continue to work on over the course of the offseason. But the thing that I really enjoyed watching was during seven on seven and full team drills, the limited amount of which we were able to see. Spencer Rattler threw the ball 12 times and completed 11 passes in the one incompletion was a drop by a tryout tight end. So when you look at where Spencer Rattler is amongst the competition level of players that are NFL veterans or second year NFL players that are looking for tryout opportunities, other guys that are coming in as drafted rookies, just like him, undrafted rookies as well, getting into the NFL, he stood out and he was able to operate well. Now, one of the things that I enjoyed watching from him so much was that he consistently attacked the middle of the field, crossing routes, delivering the ball where it needed to be, making the right decisions as well. He and Pittsburgh wide receiver Bub Means, we're going to talk about here in a little bit, had a really nice couple of connections. They clearly have chemistry together. Bub Means telling everybody that asked about Spencer Rattler, he is one of them ones, is what he kept saying. He, He was all about his work with Spencer Rattler as well. So Uh, Just opportunities there for you to be able to see some of the things that he had control over, not, you know, uh, whether or not he was picking apart a defense or looking safeties off or doing things that manipulated a defense. No, no, no. I'm not worried about that stuff right now. But the things that I saw in terms of his decision making and his ball placement, his delivery, his ball velocity, his footwork, hearing him call plays, which I was able to hear on the sideline, all of those things, those things that aren't impacted by the talent level of the guys that are lining up outside uh, on the opposite side of you looked really, really good, sounded really, really good. So some steps forward and some steps underneath for Spencer Rattler as he looks to get those legs underneath him here at the NFL level. We'll see how things go. The next thing that I want to highlight here is Clint Kubiak, the New Orleans Saints offensive coordinator. Of course, a lot of expectations coming in about what this new New Orleans Saints offense will look like. And there's a couple of things that I think you can really take away from this. But the thing that I really enjoyed most about watching Clint Kubiak was his demeanor. Um, Look, we finally got to talk to him uh, after the practice had concluded. We talked to him out on the field in a little scrum. And you've probably seen the conversation with him and Aaron Summers over at New Orleans Saints, uh, their YouTube page. You can also find our, our conversation or media conversation with him over there as well. He doesn't have the type of demeanor that really jumps out in your face that really like makes you um, you know, he's not a rah-rah guy, I think is what we would say if he was a player, right? He would be a lead by example type. 
And he even mentioned that like he's not here to be the center of the story. He's not here to be the center of the universe for this team. He's just here to help the team win. And I was a little bit worried about sort of that kind of quiet demeanor that he has that that might remind people a little bit too much of Pete Carmichael and things like that. And then that would end up kind of casting a lot of doubts and aspersions that didn't need to be cast. But I will tell you this, um, Clint Kubiak on the field, miles and miles and miles of a gap between him and Pete Carmichael in terms of the presence and the way that the intensity is felt. He was pushing, he was correcting during reps, he was giving and issuing corrections in between reps. He was all about working with the quarterbacks alongside Andrew Janoko, although he did float around a little bit as well. Um, he was a guy that was all about the details, didn't look like he missed anything that happened on the field and was in there communicating, talking. You can hear him shouting, not shouting like yelling at the players, but making his voice heard. You could hear all of that. It was very, very different. And I will say even the tempo of the practice was different under Clint Kubiak in a in a good way than what we have seen in recent practices for the New Orleans Saints. Just you could feel the intensity. You can feel the tempo, how quickly they wanted to work, how quickly the timing needed to be right, all these other things. You could just tell that there was a standard there that it, that is different than the standard was before. I don't know if I will say better or worse because I've only seen one practice but it's certainly different and you can very much feel it. And another guy that absolutely brought it <laughs> from that coaching staff on Saturday today was Keith Williams, New Orleans Saints' new wide receivers coach. You'll hear him also referred to by players and other coaches as Coach Dub. Um, just energy, energy, energy all the time, joking around, you know, being very animated, loud, shouting and letting players know what to do. There was one moment where they had run through a particular route during a routes on air, which literally it's just like all the wide receivers line up and they all run the same route and a quarterback throws in the football, right? Um, they were running this deep hitch or this deep comeback and about three players did it. All of them did it extremely well. He turned and he looked at one of the other players that was lining up and about to go and said, we're doing really well. Don't screw this up. And like, really like, just again, set a standard. Like he's another one of those guys that's just demanding precision from this team. You could see him walk over and celebrate with the team, walk over and celebrate with players when they did something well. Uh, you go up and dap up the entire wide receiver unit, pat helmets, all this other stuff. You could just feel the energy that Coach Dub brought to the field. And I think that's going to have an enormous impact on this New Orleans Saints wide receiver room. Because one of the things that I felt at that wide receiver room really picked up towards the end of the season last year that they didn't have early swag, attitude, energy, all of that. You saw it later on in the year when A.T. Perry, Rashid Jaheed, and Chris Olave were dancing, doing touchdown celebrations, things like that. Didn't necessarily see that early on in the year. I would expect that you're going to see that right away with Coach Dub Keith Williams leading the way for this New Orleans Saints wide receiver group. Now, those weren't the only standouts, and they weren't the only ones to bring energy. Uh, Bub Means, the New Orleans Saints' new wide receiver they drafted in the fifth round, brought a ton of it. And the Saints are already doing some interesting things with first round pick Taliese Fuanga that a lot of folks are already starting to overreact to, but we can temper a little bit of that overreaction here as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by friends at eBay Motors, passion, drive, patience, the formula for winning championships is also the formula that helps to keep your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Whether you're looking for superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, you're going to be able to find all of it over at ebaymotors.com. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 parts for your ride or die, you'll always get exactly what you're looking for over at eBay Motors. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Because of eBay Motors, you're going to be able to find everything that you want at the prices that you need. eBay has everything that you need to level up your car and start to bring home those wins. Keep your ride or die alive today at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode of Locked On Saints brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, our official sports betting partners here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's winner take all time in the NBA and in the NHL, and FanDuel is making sure 
that you are getting an opportunity to bring home a big win of your own because you're going to be able to bet on every single NBA game, NHL game, all throughout the playoff series. You could even look at player props and much more. Who's going to score the first basket? What's the, you know, who's going to, you know, over under for points, all of these other things. There's a ton to check out. And that's before we even get to all of the rookie NFL props as well, including offensive player of the year, over unders for passing yards for guys like uh, Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams and much more. And look, right now it's even better because new customers are going to get $150 in bonus bets by simply winning any $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in. Uh, bonus bets that you can use on spreads, money lines, player props, and much more. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. FanDuel, America's number one sports. Let's get it. Houdat Nation. Bub Means brings the energy. The New Orleans Saints are already doing interesting and slightly confusing things with first round pick Taliese Fuanga and one top tryout player, I guess you can say, really, really stood out to me at New Orleans Saints Rookie Minicamps. Don't forget, we're going to have more for you on Monday's episode, bringing you more minicamp uh, observations, takeaways, things like that. But I wanted to get you some of the most important things right away. We got to dive into quarterback coach Andrew Janoko. We got some looks over at some of the uh, UDFA guys, including Dallin Holker and much more. So we're going to get a lot of that over to you on Monday and Tuesday. But right now, let's focus on three more big points that I really want to highlight. I want to start with wide receiver Bub Means. We just finished discussing the um, energy that uh first year for the new orleans saints that new wide receivers coach coach dub coach keith williams uh brought to that position group and definitely another one of those guys that helped out there from that position group was bub means new orleans saints fifth round selection out of um out of pittsburgh i will say first and foremost he looks the part right six foot one 212 pounds he just looks like a big big time threatening vertical uh, wide receiver on the outside, right? That's very much what he looked like. Did a really good job, uh, particularly working the middle of the field, finding open spots in coverage. Again, the coverage wasn't super complex or anything. So it could, maybe it was easier to find those spots and whatever, but as a guy getting his first reps as an NFL player, that's still something you want to see. If it's supposed to be easier, quote unquote, then you'd like to see them do it. And you absolutely saw uh, Bub means be able to take advantage of that. But the other thing that really stood out for me with him was his energy, dancing around, joking around. He and Keach and, and Coach, Dub, Coach Dub kind of talking a lot, like getting adjustments and things like that. Him taking all of that and immediately trying to implement it, going back. How was that coach? Like that kind of attitude. It was awesome to see. He said he hadn't gotten an opportunity just yet to be able to really like hone in and talk to some of the veterans since they were, since they were away at the moment. He did mention that Chris Olave was at the facility today, uh, but wasn't, you know, participating obviously in rookie mini camps because there's no reason for him to, but mentioned he got to say hi and all these other things and really looking forward to working with him, talking to him, all these other things. So you can see all those connections already starting to form. Uh, mentioned that he's excited to work with Derek Carr as well. But uh, look, I think that like the, the way that they use Bub Means all throughout the day was as an outside receiver. And maybe he's one of those guys that does end up being able to compete as the X guy over on the outside. We're going to see what happens there. I still think A.T. Perry has the inside track. Uh, Cedric Wilson's a really good addition for a big slot receiver, all that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But man, look, Bub Means checks a lot of boxes. And I think that that's a good thing. Again, we shouldn't get overly invested in what we're seeing in rookie minicamp. But when you see positive things, it's okay to acknowledge that you saw those positive things. And there were a lot of positives that we took away uh, from Bub Means on Saturday. The other thing that was really interesting were the, were the Saints working offensive tackle, Taliesi Fuanga, their first round selection, who is uh, likely to start at right tackle as the season begins, right? But they ended up having him work a lot at left tackle, and they're going to continue to do that, I assume, probably over the course of minicamp, like rookie minicamp, maybe even into veteran minicamp. We'll see how that goes, depending upon who's present, who's not, all those other things. Uh, but they started working him over on the left side here throughout all of this. And I think that like when we share that information, it, it gets it gets expanded a bit into, oh, the Saints want to start him at left tackle. No, 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 no. That's not really what this is. Uh, Dennis Allen said, we're very comfortable that he'll be able to play at right tackle. And then he basically just went on to explain that like they just want to see if he can also play left tackle. They want to know the versatility, the flexibility that they get in their top investment in this year's draft class. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Now, I think that if you like 
really try to move him over to left tackle, it creates some big time issues for you, right? You drafted a guy that's pro ready, ready made to start at right tackle. Then you move him over to left tackle. What are you doing with Trevor Penning in that situation? All those other things, but all of that's hypothetical for right now. For me, this feels much more for right now over the course of these three days with mandatory with the uh, uh, rookie minicamp. It feels like information gathering more than it is anything else. Can he do it? Is it an option for him for his future? Um, is it an option for him if you know uh, Trevor Penning goes down and they feel more confident in their immediate backup at right tackle? So then you can maybe move Fuang over to left tackle and then have a new guy starting at right tackle for you, maybe an Aliudo or a um, uh, a Landon Young, for instance, something like that. I, I think it's really just information gathering so that you know what all you have in your top investment in this year's draft class. I don't think that this is signaling that the Saints intend to start him at left tackle. If they did, I'd be very shocked. Let me just put it that way. Not to say that it's impossible, uh, but it would be a weird decision uh, if they went that route. But we'll see. We'll see exactly which way they go. But I think that's probably more so all that that is. Uh, and then lastly, I just want to mention a guy that like we've never talked about here on the show uh, because he comes in as a tryout player. And, and look, it's not that often that I come out of a rookie minicamp and want to talk about a tryout player, but Charlotte University quarterback Jalen Jones was at the facility today on a tryout basis with the team playing wide receiver. So he basically did everything except for play quarterback. But here's what stood out to me. Not only did he run routes and catch passes as a wide receiver, but they also had him working on the new kickoff rules with kickoff coverage. They also had him with kickoff returns. It was just a lot of different things that he was doing. And so when it comes down to a tryout player making a roster, it's always going to be an uphill battle for those players. But when you have a bunch of different avenues to prove something, that's where I think it really begins to kind of magnify your opportunity to land with the team. So I'm really, really interested. We only get to see this for one day, right? One out of the three rookie minicamp days. So I'll be really interested to see if he's back around for mandatory minis, if he's back around for vet minis, back around for OTAs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, because again, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to go somewhere with a team, you want to have as many different avenues, pathways there as possible to maximize your opportunities. I think a guy like Jalen Jones is absolutely doing that. Speaking of only seeing one of the three days, by the way, this is another reason why I'm not so sure that the Saints are really like gung ho running into the idea that Taliesi Fuanga can will be their starting left tackle is because it feels like something that would be like a premature decision to be made and they wouldn't let us see that. You know what I mean? Like I would imagine that an any NFL team wouldn't let media see that and that instead they would, you know, kind of do what it is that they would typically do as opposed to like show like, oh, look, we're thinking about doing this. Uh, that's one of the other reasons why I think it's mostly information gathering than it is anything about that. So just something that, that popped in my mind as I was talking about Jalen Jones there. But Jalen Jones, really, really interesting. And he's a big guy. Uh, I don't have my roster on me, but I mean, he was another one of those guys that stood out with his physique along with like a Trajan Jeffcoat uh, as well as Bub Means. But it was just really interesting. Like a guy that comes in with quarterback knowledge, quarterback experience, and is doing all these other things, like that obviously has some benefit. Taysom Hill would talk about that all the time, the benefit of having the knowledge of a quarterback and all those other positions. So just interesting, interesting to see when it comes to Jalen Jones. Look, there's so many other observations as well. Uh, Andrew Janoco, the New Orleans Saints new quarterbacks coach, we got to dive into uh, our look at Christian Boyd, who had some flashy moments uh, throughout the day. And then some injuries too, some guys not, uh, not participating that were a part of the draft class, Josiah Zerum, as well as Jalen Ford. So we'll get you some of those updates coming up on Monday's episode. Do not miss that. So I appreciate you very much as always, y'all, for making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out Locked on Pelicans, Locked on LSU as well. Learn everything going on here at Locked on Louisiana. I appreciate you very much as always. Make it Locked on Saints part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. How you living. Let me know how you're momming them. And trust me, that nation, I'll holla at you. Oh, 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 oh,